Hello, um, my name is Alex Crombie. I'm here to talk about uh, our project uh, on developing a maths toolkit for physicists. I'm here representing myself, Patrick Johnson, Chris Heverson and uh, Danny Godden, who are all um, staff and students at the University of Sheffield Hallam, or Hallam Sheffield Hallam University, better way of saying it. Um, so, um, what is the background to what we were trying to do? Well, we have encountered heuristically and and, and um, with our experience of running this degree that uh, students encounter difficulty uh, moving from our first year and a level four content to the level five content. Our level four content, we tend the math. We're talking specifically over the mathematics content here. We tend to um, give them the tools that they will need uh, to be able to develop further and the more functional maths that they will need to solve problems in areas such as thermodynamics, quantum mechanics, um, and so on. Um, they have, however, uh, traditionally encountered difficulties um, as we expand from this more uh, constricted math uh, approach to mathematics, where you're just learning maths as they would have done at school because you're learning maths um in our first year to then we're moving to more maths in practice so i always describe it as um moving it on, onto a sort of toolbox of things that they will need to help them solve problems so uh, you know a selection of spanners they need to know which one to use in which location and that opening up of the boundaries has often um caused problems for our students um i uh we noticed it in a it uh, within the literature i think it causes problems in general to move from isomorphic problems to more problem-based learning uh but we have noticed this within our own degree uh within our own degree course it of course has not been um um helped with the pandemic uh, our university similar to a lot of other institutions automatically progressed our first years um it was found it was too difficult to differentiate uh, for uh, between uh gradings and so there was an automatic uh, an, um progression this occurred before they had completed the course and naturally engagement completely dropped off a cliff when it was announced that there was an automatic progression so our uh, currently second years uh have encountered more difficulties uh than in previous years because of their level of maths um is not where we would have expected them to be. Um, in terms of the sort of background in theoretically, um, we have found and it has been shown that the sort of the hierarchical nature so that you learn the basics and you build building blocks um, as building blocks and you build upon those. Um, therefore, if you have closed a path off your by not understanding something lower down, you are that that propagates up to the higher level, more difficult areas of maths um, that you um, to propagate that sort of difficulty through to there. Um, therefore, if you, you if you didn't learn something in your first year it, and it propagates through, if you don't pick it up, you it can expand to be something that uh, that fill that affects large areas of the degree course. Um, um, there is in the evidence in the literature if you look into maths anxiety um there is obviously social anxiety about asking for help and not just social anxiety but an anxiety for of um uh, i mean in a sort of layman's term looking stupid um and nobody wants to look stupid um and this sort of comes in 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 reverse correlation to difficulty so if you're asking for something that you don't that just like that week that you don't get people are happy about that they don't they they think i'm at this level and i don't get this but it's what being taught if they're asking for something that they should have learned a year ago two years ago um they're almost admitting that they can't do large areas of maths they're also missing a large areas of failure and it, and so the further back you go the more um difficult students have found it to ask for support uh, in developing. So whilst they need the help, they, the, the more they need the help, the less likely they are to ask for the help. Um, and as I discussed, yeah, they, students are moving from isometric problems where there's just this here, here's, here's a different a set of differentiation questions or here are some integration questions, solve them and give me the answer um, to you know, um, in for example, in thermodynamics, you know, work out uh, the energy of the system and how what can it do in this case. Um, be more practical. You know, how do we identify um, the energy states and different things? And they need to think about what maths they're going to use, how they're going to use it, how they're going to put it into practice. And that is something that they 
have not encountered as much in their academic careers, in their school careers. Um, and so when we ask them to open up to use maths as tools rather than maths for maths sake, um, that can often um, be difficult. So uh, what were we doing? Well, um, our idea was to develop this uh, bespoke tool, um, bespoke in the sense that it was specific to the maths content at the Sheffield Hallam, um, to support students who were struggling with maths content. Um, so this was obviously available to, would be available to all students, but the target audience here was students who maybe hadn't engaged so well or were needed to look at the more fundamentals or needed um, less expanding their horizons and more um, focusing down on, on the maths that they needed to know to be able to, to uh, complete their course. Um, we also wanted to look into this, we wanted to, this to be evidence-based, so we wanted to look into how uh, students are engaging with their revision materials. Uh, there's lots of things like Khan Academy uh, videos online, do they like videos of people or do they like videos like this, like a screen grab? Um, are they happy doing projects? Do they want sol uh, problems? Do they want solved problems? Would they rather read a lot of materials? So we wanted to know how people uh, engage them so we could build off of that. And finally, this was a student-led project. Um, uh, and we, I opened it up to um, to, student, uh, to students who ever wanted to get involved. Uh, Chris and Danny did get involved, who were very keen uh, to learn in this area. And um, it gives them the opportunity to uh, develop skills in uh, physics education research um, for both of them want to go on to, to academic careers. And it gives them a chance to see the, 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 the wide nature of what we can do as academics. Um, the aims of our project, uh, it had to be easily accessible. So it had to be something that students could do on their own, not something that they were guided through, something that we could just point them in the direction and say, if you're struggling, identify, self-identify where here, and this will walk you through it like a, um, a route map to identify what, the, what your problem is. And it gives you the areas in which you need uh, to, to improve and, and tools to improve them. Um, it had to be bounded. Uh, I think when we, uh, if we drop Afkin and Weber on students, that's a big fit test books and said there in there is the thing you need. It shows so much physics that you get uh, this, you, uh, so much maths that you get this terror of the um, of the large um, amount there is. Whereas if you just say no, you only need to know here and here and here in order to progress and succeed within this in your degree. We've got a there. We've we slimmed it down to say sixteen worksheets, and as long as you can make sure you can do all of those, you'll be fine. And then that's much easier to work through. It gives um, a lot of uh, milestones for students to learn in. Um, and they need to be able to to support different styles of learning, which is what we were um, interested in. Uh, um, in investigating what, how, what different styles of learning our students had. So we um, were hoping to provide videos as well as uh, pro solve problems and context. So not just this is maths because we're learning maths, but here, why do we learn about complex numbers? Well, we need them for this, this and this, and we need them in this, and why are they important? Uh, you know, why do we need to know about um, vector calculus, what, what do we use it for? Well, you know, as you go on to do fluid dynamics, blah, 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 thing, things like this, to show what the purpose is for us. Because we are physicists at the end of the day, not mathematicians, we use maths for a purpose. Um, so I'm racing through this uh, very quickly. Um, however, I've just presented what we wanted to do. Um, I, uh, we are still in the process of uh, looking at what our students get back to us. We haven't had so much, so many, um, uh, responses over the summer that we were hoping for. So we're hoping to continue uh, through to the next semester to gather a, a wider range of opinions as whilst releasing it as well. So we can gather opinions on how it, um, people encountered with it. Um, we'd like to, at the moment, it's focused on our second year maths content. Uh, so the maths that they would need for their level five um, uh, materials, but we'd like to move on to the maths for um, level six as well. Um, uh, and also uh, eventually level four, but the level four is already quite well catered for. Um, and it wanted to increase interactivity. So at the moment, it's a series of worksheets that have sort of been given a, in, a, in a sort of um, uh, file folder, and you can just go through and, and, and pick out the topic. And we have a sort of um, um, uh, cheat sheet saying in this module, so in our module on thermodynamics, you will need these concepts, and here are the sheets, you know, go to sheet six and sheet nine and sheet 
15 um and do those those are the ones you'll need in quantum mechanics you'll need this this and this however it'd be much better i think if it was a more engaging some uh, probably a web presence where we put um the materials onto a website and you can click and say i'm interested in this and then you could have um run yourself through it and it can then it could record also your progression and these kind of things to really gamify it to give students a sense of progression and developing in the in the um in the subject that was a real whistle stop tour and i realize i haven't provided you with any any concrete of what we have developed just some ideas about what we need i think um in this era uh we are hoping to uh, this has been developed over last year we're hoping to uh, uh, roll it out with this next cohort uh, and in investigate how how our toolkit is working um I, what i wanted to say with the important thing is i think that students need extra support uh in in ways that often we we don't think not everyone um is potentially an academic and has uh, engages with that in the same way often i think we forget that students sometimes just need to be able to use the tools without having to to feel um overwhelmed by the lack of by the amount of maths there is and so in providing um them with a way to to uh, to to just get to grips to co be comfortable that gives them a nice starting point to know that they're comfortable to do the physics um that the, the maths uh, that uses the maths as a toolkit as a as a toolbox um yeah so we uh, hopefully will report back on how this has gone and how people have engaged with it maybe next year um and so we we'll watch out this space for uh next year's presentation hopefully thank you very much for listening um and and i'll take questions we'll take questions now